Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about working alone, I suppose. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, I've been working as a software developer for four years now, but I've never had a mentor and never done pair programming and basically only worked alone, spearheading new projects. Do you think I should look for another job that might offer me offer you uh, offer me this oh, okay offer me a mentor or like co-workers and so forth or do you think getting involved in a welcoming medium-sized open source project might suffice an open source project would require me to dedicate more of my free time to make up for what I for what my job can't provide well uh, I basically wrote back to this subscriber that it very much depends on your skills where they are and like what your long-term goal is. Uh, if you aim to be a freelancer or if you, I don't know, if you are already a fair, I mean you've worked for four years so I can't imagine you being like a super senior pro, I mean you're definitely an experienced software developer after four years but I, w I wouldn't, s you are a senior to some and I will make, I will, like this is a disclaimer, my definition of a senior software developer is usually a little bit stricter than the average. So you're definitely a senior. But uh, what's more important is, I think rather than calling you a senior or not calling you a senior is, do you have the skills to weigh up the fact that you haven't worked with other people? if that makes sense. Because usually there's a balance, there's like an average for things. It's similar to, uh, uh, let's take that you do a physical a fi a fitness test for the military or something like that, where if, let's say for the sake of argument, that you're really shit at running. Well, that's okay if you're below average, yes, this is, so, as long as you make up for it in other areas, like maybe you can do a lot of push-ups or maybe you can do a lot of pull-ups or whatever, or something different, right? Like you have some distribution that is a little bit, it's not completely average or top-notch in every area, but that's okay because other stuff is is making the whole thing worth it for the army. And it's the same thing for employers, like you, nobody is perfect, so there's always like strengths and weaknesses within a person and uh, as long as you have those skills you're fine but I suspect though that that might not be the case and basically what I'm saying is that in general having co-workers is it's a pretty important thing for the, your long-term development because the fact it, it's not only to like grow as an individual because you can be like the code meister you can be the best damn coder in the world and even so uh, the social aspect and I know some of you are gonna go oh, that's so so bullshit and I go no it's not it's so not god it's not it's so important. Oh dear lord, it's important. Uh, not unle unle unless, of course, as I said, you are the code meister and you work in a company where they're literally just, you're basically just a code slave. And, you know, they throw you, you throw your piece as like a specification and a paycheck at the end of every month into like the closet or the cubicle you're sitting and then you don't really know their names that's it like if that's you then you're gonna be fine but for most of you most senior level positions you should know this they were going to expect you to have a fairly high skill level in the technical area but also in the social area you are in many cases going to be expected to lead or at the very least influence teams and decision making processes and help non-technical stakeholder hold them by the hand or do all kinds of other semi-social stuff where you might need to coach people or train new juniors things like that and if you have never ever worked with anybody by but yourself you're not really, oh, unless you are a truly socialite, a true socialite in your spare time, you're not really going to have any of that. And sure, you can go to an open source project and you can dip your toes in and like so forth, and that's going to help you to an extent, but as this person identifies, it's 
going to require you to dedicate free time and it's not really something your job is going to help you with and I like to say that anything you want to be good at you need to ha it needs to be your profession practically always uh, if you're gonna get really really good at it or at the very least you're gonna have to dedicate serious resources to it um, you might be able to swing that if you have no other obligations uh, but something that might be for the people who out there who are going to tell me that oh Frederick yes like, I'm just going to ignore what you're saying about the social part because I mean I, I'm either a very lovely person or I just I don't know I just don't care about the social aspect so there's a one other thing that you may not consider so much and that is that although you may not necessarily have to talk to people and like be the person who's doing like the team leadership and like all that stuff uh, Every single company that uses modern coding practices and works at a little bit of scale has a team-oriented workflow. Why is that significant? Well, because if you have worked alone at like an agency or a consultant, like at the low-end stuff that you where you never collaborate with anybody else, it's very unlikely that you've ever worked with code reviews or like this person was saying like pair programming is not necessarily something you have to do you can go your entire career most likely without having it but you might not have worked with uh, c like um, CI pipelines or collaboration platforms or any stuff like I mean some people I've talked to they haven't even used wor version control because they never needed it why would you, like, I mean, of course you can use it just for yourself, but I hope that you're seeing where I'm getting going with this, like having different branching strategies for Git, for example, because you have coworkers and you can't just Git push, um, force push everything and rebase whenever you want. These sorts of tiny little things you learn by having coworkers because you have more people around you. And so my suggestion is basically that you have to answer this for yourself. Do you feel that you have a good understanding of how it is to, if you've never worked with people like outside of yourself, I think that you should consider switching, job, switching jobs or doing consultancy in a firm with a team or something like that. Uh, but at the very least, uh, ask yourself that question first. Do you feel like you have what it takes to just kind of seamlessly go into a, uh, a group of other developers and go, hey guys, this is me. Uh, I kind of know how how all of these things work. Uh, would be great if we could work together. If you can just if you can do that, don't sweat it. Just be just you. Just do you. So, what I want you to take away from this is basically that if you find yourself working completely in isolation, that is probably the worst thing that you can do long term to your career. If you, unless you have mad, mad skills, like you're very, very good uh, or very naturally sociable or something like that. The reason being is simply that one part is, especially in the earlier days, it's very unlikely that you will have the knowledge or the skills to develop yourself as much as you could if you had peers, especially if you have more senior co-workers. That's one part. The other part is the social aspect. And if the whole idea of you becoming a manager someday or becoming a team lead or a coach or a true senior, as I like to say, if that's not applicable, like that's something that you want, then no, that's not the biggest deal in the world uh, because you can be a one-man show or one-woman show practically if you want to. But the thing to consider is that most senior roles like it's kind of weird in many cases most companies expect you when you have a few years of experience to have worked as part of a software team or similar sorts of situations because it's part of the ecosystem it's like how most of the industry is doing the stuff that they're doing and if that can't sell you on the idea of having co-workers remember that a lot of the everyday stuff in terms of tooling and practices that we use in software, like that are considered best practices, are only really there because there's more than one person working on the same code base. And trust me when I say this, I have seen software developers who never worked with anybody else. And some of them were like, they kind of kept relevant. And some of them wrote code that was so horrendously bad and weird that an average software developer would just assume that they were incompetent. So being a lone wolf can work, but it can also be a risk. Have a great day.